Cool J is hard as hell. You battle anybody, I don't care. You tell. I excel. They all fell. Gonna go sell double L. Must rock my bell. Wanna ring the bell? All right. Ding, ding. All right, here we are. Back in the Ultimate Sports Network talking boxing. We're going to preview the Pacquiao Broner fight coming up this Saturday and a bunch of other fun stuff. Once again, joined by Charles Farmer, upper left, John Respondi below us. Um, gentlemen, welcome. Uh, we're going to see where we go. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna, just going to throw this out there. We've got a fight that either can go either way, I think. We're looking at if they revert to form of what we've seen in the past, this could be an action fight. Or it could be two guys standing in the middle of the ring for 12 rounds and doing nothing. I don't know. Charles, what do you think is going to happen with the Pacquiao side? Let's, go, let's start with that side. Well, I mean, you bring Freddie Roach back into the, into the mix, and uh, Freddie likes Pacquiao to be aggressive. That's the main thing. So with him being aggressive, he comes out, he has all of the tools but you just don't know what's going to happen. But if he's on point, he's going to be faster. He's going to come for uh, Broner. He's going to be more of the aggressor, I believe. So, therefore, I think that's going to be the strategy because usually, even when you saw the last couple of fights, Manny, Manny would kind of wait. But I really think Freddie Roach is going to push towards uh, him trying to get rid of Broner. And I think okay. he thinks he can do it because of what Broner's done in the past. Okay. John, what do you think from Broner? What, what are we going to see from this guy this time? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the easy one. <laughs> He's saying all the right things. I, I happen to watch All Access, and he said that he, when he was sitting in jail that uh, he a lot, kind of a light went off because he admitted. He said, look, I'm a fool. He admitted it, and that's kind of a good thing, almost like admitting, look, I know I do dumb things. I need to be better. So I, I thought – Okay, he's 29 years old. Maybe he's growing up a little bit. You, then you hear rumors of other things going on. You know, you just don't know. Um, it could be as simple as that we, we built him up too much when he was a 130, 135 pounder. Maybe he wasn't as good as we thought. I mean, he's still done extremely well. I mean, he's controversial as hell, and that's what makes uh, – that's why he keeps getting fights, a lot of the reason. And he can fight. If he's really, really focused – I mean, he has an age advantage. Obviously, he's 29, Pacquiao's 40. But he starts so slow, the Pacquiao's going to just come out. And like, like Charles said, he's just going to be popping him with shots. And Pacquiao's got a good – I mean, I'm sorry, Broner's got a good chin. So I think he can pretty much take the shots. If Broner – and this is a big if – if he's totally focused and he can be a little more aggressive in the beginning – and hang with Pacquiao, I think he's got a shot later in the fight. Because if we remember the way Jeff Horn supposedly beat Pacquiao, which, no. Yes, okay. Is he was physical with him. He's bigger, though. See, so that's the thing. Uh, Broner is about the same size. I think they're both about 5'6". But he's, I think he's stronger than Manny. I do. I think he's a little bit stronger and again he's younger so his legs might be a little bit better see the thing is with a fight like this there's so many intangibles you've got a 40 year old senator you've got a 29 year old guy who you don't even know if he's even reached his potential yet maybe he did when he was 23 so you throw those things all up in the air and you think well what do i see happening and i i basically see what charles said i think that pacquiao is going to come out aggressive I don't think as aggressive as the Pacquiao that was before he got knocked out by Marquez. I think he's a little bit more, I don't know, maybe smarter since he got hit with that right hand. I don't think he's ever going to forget that. He's still right. aggressive, but he was hyper aggressive, if you guys remember. Oh, before. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, and he, he's been a little smarter about it since that, whatever you want to call it. So well, I think that's what we're going to do. It's going to be Pacquiao's coming out fast. Broner's looking to counter. But maybe if Broner can jab a little and keep Pacquiao off balance, then it could get very interesting. Okay, well, let's, let's go a little bit of history of both of these guys, and maybe we can come to some kind of idea of what's going on. Now, Charles, you know, you remember when you alerted me to who <laughs> Manny Pacquiao was. Um, right. to, to give everyone an idea, uh, I'm sitting at home, and I don't think I was watching the fight. It was the, the first Juan Manuel Marquez fight. and 
Charles gives me a call and is like, you got to turn this one on. You got to see this. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And this is Marquez gets knocked down by three straight lefts right down the pipe uh, in the first round. And then Marquez comes back and basically made Manny look like a one trick pony. I believe that's your phrase, not mine, the way we used that at that time. <laughs> and well, but I mean, it was true. And he couldn't land that same punch again the rest of the fight. Now he's evolved since then to where, you know, the head movement and again, the, the hyper aggressive uh, behavior and all that. But in my way of looking at it, you know, he, the Margarito fight was, we fought somebody that, was bigger, stronger, and tried to bully us, and it didn't work. And if you remember what Margarita's face looked like after that, it was just amazing. But then he gets bullied by Jeff Horn, which doesn't seem to make sense. So are we at the point where he's older and diminished, or was that just an anomaly? Wow. Uh, he's older. I wouldn't he's say he's diminished. Someplace, I think. Diminished as far as you may think. And let's be real about the Jeff Horn fight, okay? Jeff Horn used elbows. Oh, I mean, sure. he cut him up. It I'm just is. saying. I mean, so if, when you see his face it's being bloodied and whatnot, it's one thing to say, oh, and you can hear the commentators, oh, he's doing this to Pacquiao. He's using elbows. He's using all yeah. kinds of things. And and when the opportunity, perhaps, for the fight to be stopped, they let it go on. And it was almost as if they wanted uh, Horn – to, to be the champion because it sets up for a lot more money and you think about overseas and things of that nature. And the way that Pacquiao, even after the loss, he was kind of like, okay, whatever. He didn't fight it. Usually when you think you lost a fight or you want to fight, you kind of go off or whatever, right. even, if you, even if he's real mild. But I'll say this. I think Pacquiao, he's changed. He still has skills, okay? And when you think about the upper echelon of fighters, he's just not as young as he was before. So we're not going to see the guy we saw against Marquez because he was nonstop. He kept punching. He felt like no one could stop him or anything. And then he got older. But now, as you look at him, he'll still come out because he's one thing about him. He's a razor sharp. He still has his, uh, his skill set. He has the ability to throw punches the right way. But the question is now, it depends on the caliber of person he's fighting. And that's why you throw it back to Bronx. Broner's is, has, and it really is now, he doesn't throw his hands. And right. I know that's crazy to say it's sound in boxing, but he doesn't throw punches. So he'll kind of move and jab, but he's not throwing anything back. Previously, he would throw punches and like, oh, wow, he might catch somebody. And I would just say this. If Bron we all know this. If Broner comes and fights the way that we think he can, it could be a, a different fight. It could be a more interesting fight. A case in point, when he fought Sean Porter. When he caught Sean Porter late in the, in the, in the uh, fight, that was legitimate. Right. It was a flash knockdown. I was like, oh, wow. Why didn't you do that earlier? That's, that is Broner's problem. He's made, he's made uh, changes with his trainers. He's done everything. You can hear the trainers in the corner cussing him out saying, right. look, right. you got to get me first and all this. And he just goes out there and he just exists. If he does that this time, Pacquiao will win the fight because Pacquiao wants to at least prove that he's worthy of one more fight. And we know what it, where he wants this to end up at, Floyd coming back out of retirement. That's what he wants right. last time. Right. Well, and, and, and what I saw, and you mentioned the fight I was going to go back to, the Sean Porter fight. I think that was the line of demarcation. After that fight, we saw before that fight we saw a almost reincarnated Meldrick Taylor, and then we saw, I don't know, a softer version of Pernell Whitaker. I, you know, it's like I'm just gonna stand here in the middle of the ring, and if you hit me, great. If you don't, you don't. And John, just just kind of help me with where Broner came from. I mean, again, we saw him younger, where he was an action fighter. And how do we get to where we are now? To a degree. You know, I, I used to think when he was younger, when he was, when everybody was saying he was the next greatest thing, he got bored well, and he just throw punches, you know, for some reason, he, even during when he was younger, there's one fight and I'm, uh, the, the name of the fighter is escaping me, but a lot of people thought he lost that fight. And it was because he just stopped punching. He'd punch occasionally, but the other, the fighter stole the rounds. And he kind of, he started to become like a turtle almost where he just gets slower and then 
he'd wait and wait and wait. And as he showed, as Charles said, as he showed against Porter, the guy can crack. You know, he punches hard. And it's got to be very frustrating for anybody who works his corner, like, say, uh, Cunningham now in his corner, because that's why he yells at him. He's right. like, look, it's like, what are you doing, man? I know you can punch. What are you waiting for? You know, and, and he just, Broner goes, he's like that. He goes to the beat of his own drummer. And no matter what you do, and I'm not about drumming him, come on, <laughs> he, he's going to do it his own speed. And it takes him a while to get going, too, if you remember that. You know, usually four or five rounds, he's usually lost, even against lesser opponents. He's right. either two rounds down or, or maybe it's really close. And you're like, then he suddenly starts to, to rev it up. He's like an old-fashioned car that just takes him 15, 20 minutes to get the motor going. Then he starts revving up. Or – Everything, everybody's yelling at him in the corner. It starts to get through to him. And he's like, I'm losing this fight. I got I to gotta get going. I think he's just really a slow starter. I do. I don't think all those psycho babble I'm throwing there makes any sense. It's just, there are some fighters that just take a while to get going. You know, and I, would, I was wondering the last time against Vargas. He did the same thing against Vargas in his last fight. He was losing, and then he came on hard the last four rounds to get the draw. I was wondering, does he need to warm up more in his in his, in his dressing room there's got to be something to try to get him going but i think it's it's here and so i don't know what you do you know well and you mentioned something that the the, the little sidelight of this whole thing is going to be the guys in the corner which it could be worth just following just by itself between roach and cunningham that could be something where you know we just put a camera in the corner and not watch the fight you know that, that could be interesting enough in itself um but looking at I go back to not the last fight, but the previous fight before that for both of them. Um, looking at the Mikey Garcia fight for Broner and the Horn fight for Pacquiao. Um, the way I look at it, it's like, okay, was this the telling fight for both of them? Because they obviously both lost, both, both of them lost those fights. Is that where we stand right now? Or is there a way they can go? Obviously, they're fighting each other, so that kind of doesn't matter. But I think that's a telltale sign of, and as we said, Horn probably did not win that fight. You know, that's, you know, splitting hairs. But Mikey Garcia definitely won the fight against Broder. So, Charles, do you think that's something where that's where we stand right now? Or is there, is there room for improvement? Or will they improve on either end? Um, the, the Pacquiao-Horn fight, I, I don't think that that was a, a clear uh, example of where Pacquiao is. Uh, I think it was just a tough fight. It was a physical fight. It was a bad fight for him. And, and it wasn't because he, a lot of, there were a lot of clean shots. Like I said, he was in it. Uh, but I think that that was, you, sometimes you have a bad night. And I think that might have been his bad night. But when he came back, and not to say Matisse was a great fight, but you started to see where he at least was able to land some punches. So it's not the old Manny Pacquiao, but it's still a guy that can be very dangerous. And if you don't come with the right tools and don't cover yourself up, he can make something happen. In regards to Adrian Broner, when you think about the the uh, the fight with uh, Mikey Garcia, I think Mike, uh, Mikey Garcia was just uh, a bad matchup for him, him as well, where he was just a, a skilled fighter that uh, Broner could not really match up with. And the reason why I say that is, even though Mikey Garcia has fought at smaller weights, he has the ability to get to get big, which is why he's going up against Spence. And okay. when you think about this. The one thing that Adrian Broner has had an issue with, his power that he had often did not travel well with him up to 147. Right. You put him at 140, 135, exciting as any to get out all day. He will fight anybody and hang with them. But at 147, it's almost as if uh, the punches don't uh, really move forward with that. Power doesn't move forward, which is why I think Madonna did what he did. Because he was like, you, you're not hurting me. And I'm still coming. So I think that's going to, that was one of the biggest issues there. But again, as John said, this is up to Broner. Broner can be as exciting as he wants to be. He has hand speed. He has a shoulder roll like he used to do with Floyd. And, and last point on this very quickly for me, if he literally legitimately wants to win this fight, if he really started to accept some of the disciplines and the, the techniques that Floyd really does in the ring, he can win this fight. But He's, co he's kind of copied some of the things Floyd does, but he hasn't been all the way into the Floyd uh, technique. Yeah. John, what, what, do you, what do you think about where we go from those last two fights? A lot of it's style matchups, too. You know, the, Charles is right. The Mikey Garcia fight, it was not a good matchup for, 
for a groaner and and it it, it, it always depends on it's always styles with not always but most of the time it is styles and and broner and, and then with broner this what makes it frustrating it's again if he really feels like he wants to get there it's like he can he can compete i think he can pretty much compete against anybody not that he's going to win because as i stated a little while ago i don't think he's as good as we might have thought but mm-hmm. Against the Pacquiao who – see, I thought Pacquiao was overconfident against Horn. I think, I think he was listening to guys like me saying, ah, Jeff Horn, he's 18, you know, he's undefeated at that time, and he's a pushover. You'll go in there and beat him. But when you go to another guy's country, you know, and you're fighting in his backyard, boxing has so many stories of these kind of things happening. And Pacquiao, he didn't complain, but he didn't complain with the Bradley decision either. Now, that's one's been debated for a long time. Pacquiao's a different guy than he was 10 years ago. He – he doesn't, he tries, I don't even think he tries. He's a sportsman. He doesn't, the only thing I thought that he whined a little bit, way too much after the, the Floyd fight, because it was like, come on, man, you lost. I don't want to hear you got a bum shoulder. I don't want to hear you got this. I don't want to hear you got a bum leg. I don't want, you know, I just like, come on, stop. You know, he's just like whining. But those other losses, it's pretty good about him. And even though, as I said, I didn't think he lost the, well, I'm not saying it now. I didn't think he lost the Bradley the first time, and I didn't think he lost the horn this time. But everyone's going to debate that forever. It's just – this fight is, is really intriguing to a lot of boxing fans just because, uh, especially with Broner, because he's such an enigma in some ways. As I said, we still don't know if he's reached whatever he's got. And then Pacquiao's 40 years old. He stopped Lucas Matisse in his last fight, which is who was obviously past his prime. Right. And, and he – but Pacquiao was – he looked good. You know, he looked more – but, again, that's what my first point was. Styles make fights. Matisse was waiting and waiting, and then he'd wing a shot. And Pacquiao would avoid it. If you, if you can get in Pacquiao's grill, if you're going to get real aggressive and push him really hard at 40 years old, I think that's, that's where you got a shot. Or who else can box like Floyd Mayweather? I mean, Mayweather just outboxed him. So Broner can't box like Floyd Mayweather at this point, I don't think. So he's going to have to decide what he's going to do. Is he going to be real aggressive? If he stands in the middle of the ring, he's just going to get hit over and over and over and then wing an occasional shot. And hopefully he catches him. And he said a few things that kind of scare me because I think, Oh, is he thinking he's going to do a Marquez on Pacquiao, you know, and just wait and wait and wait and then bam, throw the right hand. I mean, don't do that. That's not how you're going to beat him. Well, it, it seems to me that he's going to have to be, Broner is going to have to be the aggressor. And what I've seen of him lately, I don't see that he's going to be able to do that. Or he's got the, as you said, the mentality to do that right now. And, you know, it, it may be that he does it right. the rounds, but, as you said, he's given up six or seven rounds by that time. Um, so, you know, I, I hate to say that if I were to handicap Yeah, he's got to start earlier, right? Yeah, he, he's got to get that, going It's going to be a real challenge for him. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, you know, if we were to say right now, definitively, who wins the fight, you know, I think it's going to be a go the distance and, you know, pack out on points. But, you know, that's, again, as, as you both said, it depends on which guy decides to show up for, for whatever reason. So... Charles, I'm interested to see what you think about the division now because this is a title fight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to figure that one out. How did either one of them get in the position to after getting blown out or at least losing the horn? How they got back in this position, and how do they fit into this division? Well, I mean, when you look at it, uh, it's it's I think they're like that that. Uh, that uh, that dark horse contender, that outside title that everybody's looking at. In fact, I think a lot of the guys perhaps who may not be at the top of the welterweight division are really salivating for for the winner. And you're hearing a lot of you're hearing the names come up. And what I mean by that is you think about Earl Spence Jr., you think about Keith Thurman, guys like that. They're like, okay, well, we don't really we can fight who we want to fight. But uh, you have guys like the Danny Garcias, okay. You look at uh, Sean Porter, and of course, uh, when you when you think about it, uh, Terrence Crawford, it, he's like licking his chops because he wants to receive some uh, true accolades in that division, and he feels as if he gets that fight, even if he fights a uh, American and takes care of him. But if he gets to fight, particularly with Pacquiao, I think he thinks that legitimate legitimizes him to a point until he can move on and get the fight that he wants, which is Earl Smith Jr. So I think that's what it is. I think they're the, the wild card. Not saying they're easy pickings or slim pickings, but I think a lot of those boxers in the welterweight division are looking at, well, I can go get that belt, then I can go here. 
I think a lot of the uh, the other fighters believe they can defeat either one of them and get that title. Yeah, kind of the idea of, oh, there's a belt over here? Oh, well, I'll go take it from them instead of earning it through the other channels, right? John, I mean, do we're a belt at- everywhere, right? yeah. everybody's got a belt nowadays. It's ridiculous. Well, yeah, that's true. That's a, that's a conversation for another day, but we have had that conversation of, you know, you've got 17 belts of one weight, and then there's another weight two pounds above that. So, yeah, that is kind of tough to come up with. But, you know, when I was reading, you know, doing a little research, I'm like, this is for a title? Really? Wow. I feel like, I, you know, I mean, and not that these, they, I mean, these aren't two good fighters, but with, with the depth of that division, I find it kind of hard to believe that this is for a belt. So it's modern, it's modern boxing, Frank. It's yeah. the way it is. They, the promoters, everybody, or not everybody, some people feel that it brings up the importance of the fight when there's a title. And for anybody who knows boxing is follow, follow boxing. I'm speaking for a number of people, I think, and mostly my opinion here. All it does is make you roll your eyes and shake your head and go, come on, man. I mean, you're diminishing the importance of guys that really achieved what they dream of when they were a young person to win a world title. When It's getting to the point where all you got to do is show up and they give you a title when you walk out. And that's just not what boxing was about, especially when I was younger. Now I'm going to be like, it was better in my day, guys. But it kind of was because the titles were so important to fighters and and they're still important they want the titles but to me at least they've been cheapened and i think if they were honest they would admit it because they just you know here i am discussing this when i really didn't intend to do that it's just that it's a wba title frank i don't know why the wba feels it has to be a title why don't they just call it an eliminator that's right. really what it is mm-hmm. but they don't like to use that word eliminate anymore but that's that's what it is I, it's just the world of boxing the surreal world of boxing well, I was prepared for this, okay? So I have a prop. I was, I was prepared for this. Uh-uh. Soapbox. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. we're going we're gonna to get on the soapbox here and go from there. Now, again, there are a lot of things that we've, um, we've discussed about, and, and unfortunately, this is the part of the last show that got cut off, but, you know, where are we headed now? Uh, not just in these, in these divisions, but just in general. Um, and I, I, and I don't know if I saw this correctly. I think I saw something, a blurb that came across my screen the other day that is it Vladimir Klitschko's coming back? Did I see that? Yeah, but he denied it. Okay. Thank All right. You. I was going to say that. That was Thank one of those. Wait a second. Yes. <laughs> good decision well, I mean, there. He, he's older than I am now, so I don't think that that's a good one. But, but that idea of, you know, we have guys out there with the PBC and other things, I, I think we're seeing a resurgence of – big name fights and the grassroots level but is it are we to the point where you know we we have that fight every week that we used to have that this is going to be a good one this is going to be good one oh this one's for a title i mean are we back to that yet or are we still kind of re, rebuilding that charles what do you think um uh, i wouldn't say we're back to that i think that it makes sense because with pbc having all those fighters in their camp then it would be easy to do that. And I know that they came right back after the one fight and then they brought the Charlo brothers on. And I think that will really bring up the base and the popularity of boxing. But they seem to take a break and come back here. Like we had Pacquiao, uh, Broner, and then it goes on and and we're still waiting to see when the uh, fight uh, between uh, Fury and Wilder is going to be this year as well. So I don't think it's back just yet, but I think that they could really make it come back because with HBO being out of the way now, there's a lot less of uh, things that make you, there's a lot less people to go through to try to fight. And if the fighters really want to be known as champions, you hear like a Terrence Crawford, and we know his situation as far as motor, but if he really wants to fight, then he'll make it happen. I, I really believe that. So you hear the fighters, or, or the, they will say that, well, my promoter doesn't want me, or my team doesn't want me to do this. It's very simple. Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao got together. They met each other and said, look, we're going to work this out. If you really want to fight somebody, you'll make it happen. Otherwise, Keith Thurman's of the world, they just kind of go along to get healthy and keep making money. So what do you want to do? John, and, and that's a good point. And, and it goes to um, your favorite week. Um, your birthday week, the week in Kentucky Derby, the, the first week of May, when that was Floyd week out here in Vegas. 
who steps into that void now? Or is someone going to step into that void? Is there someone where we can say, every year, this is going to be the big fight like it used to be? Because that was a great weekend here, and I think it was a great week for boxing in general. Every week, you know, May 2nd, 5th, whatever, Mayweather was going to fight. Is there someone out there who we can hang our hat on that says, this is the guy now? Who is the next guy that we have to we have to have him fight every time we have a big time opportunity? John Uzer, who is it? Well, whether he deserves it or not, it's Canelo. I mean, that's when he's going to fight. He's going to fight at Cinco de Mayo. I mean, he's going to fight May. That's Oscar De La Hoya already said that he's trying to get Golovkin for a third fight uh, for for May. So that's it's 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 Canelo. He he's the guy now, you know, as far as that goes. And uh, it's like May and September. That's what what they're looking for: two fights a year. And that's just like just like Floyd Mayweather used to do. That's right. You always knew pretty much when Mayweather was going to fight again. Even if he was quiet for a few months, you knew that you were going to get an announcement that he was fighting this guy on this particular day. You could even plan for it. You know, right. which was really kind of for me. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 undoubtedly to me, it's Canelo. And, and he, it, it, that, that fight with Golovkin was a great fight. I mean, at Max Boxing, you know, I wrote an article that for me, it's the fight of the year, mostly because Canelo had been pushed so far into the corner. You know, he, He'd been busted for the bad meat or whatever you want to call it, stupidity, whatever it was. But he fought a different fight. He fought – he went after Golovkin. Nobody expected that. He pushed Golovkin back. Nobody pushed Golovkin back. So he had to dig down deep. And then Golovkin, 36 years old, came back in the last three rounds and, and gave Canelo hell. So for me, as far as drama, as far as proving something, as far as all that, it was the fight of the year. So – uh, and people don't have to agree with me. That's fine. But it, it, all those things just added up to that. But May now, it, Canelo is in Golden Boy. That's that's their date. They, they think they own that now. Okay. Now, I, I'm also noticing something with the, uh, with the PBC and everything. Um, it used to be this was the place. Vegas was the place. MGM, Caesars, whatever. Barclays Center is taking over some of that. And then you also have some stuff going on out in, in Los Angeles as well. Are we to the point where we don't have to have the big Vegas fight to still have the big deal? Wow. That's a, that's a good question. I think the, most people know that Vegas is uh, still the Mecca, and that's where you want to see the fight. The L.A. fight, I think it's okay. I would probably say right now Barclays, Barclays Center is uh, probably the second in the loop because it's New York. A lot of people are coming out. A lot of entertainers, a lot of the athletes are coming to watch the fight. And I think you still can have a top-notch fight there. But uh, I think people really want to see Vegas. I, I think even when you look at the Water Fury uh, part two, they're going to Vegas because they know that's where it is. I mean, New York was cool. We kind of got a little taste of it. But uh, – and, and I think part of the promotions – and I will say this. I think that the issue, too, is when you look at um, the promotion with Floyd. One thing about Floyd, he had the right people in place to make you want to watch his fights. Right. They had excellent promotions. They had entertainment. And they like, man, they made you want to go to Vegas. Now, I just think that with all these different and individual promotion teams, it simply is not the same. So to answer your question, I think we can go to Barclays for another one. I'm not sure LA's the answer, but I think it's either Barclays or Vegas. Well, it's the thing of, you know, and I know you did it, it's, it's a week-long event when it's in Vegas. I don't know if it's quite the same thing if it's in New York or in LA. It's day of, maybe way in, and that's it. I mean, you were out here, I remember you talking about, you know, hanging out and, and at the way in, and then you had a chance to talk to Floyd's grandmother, you know. How is that something you're going to have happen if you're at Barclays? I mean, you know, it's it seems like it's an event for that or at or at Jerry World. You know, there's so much else that has to happen in the city in order to make it a week long thing. Whereas here, we'll just shut down the city for a week, and here come all the Ricky Hatton fans. Let's party, you know. So mm -hmm. that to me is one of those things where I I understand how it's evolving. But I hope it doesn't go too far away from that because if we have these events, and obviously Canelo Triple G was an event, uh, like it or not, McGregor and Mayweather was an event. If we have these events, I think we can also start to bring back the undercards. Uh, my, my biggest complaint about that is show the undercard. 
you know, let us see who's on the undercard and build them up as well. So how do they get back to, or how do we get back to being able to follow more boxing, John, instead of just this big event? Is it something well, that for me, covered? For me, I, I watch all the fights because I, I, you know, I have the zone and ESPN Plus, so they show the undercard fights, and I, I know a lot about, quite a bit about most of the fighters. So it's very important that I watch all the fights. For the casual fan, you know, as Bob Arum so infamously said a number of years ago, and I was really angry when he said this, ah, nobody cares about the undercards. Everybody just cares about the main fight. And I thought, you know, I don't think that's true. I think you got the, okay, people that are just peripheral people. Yeah, they're just talking about Mayweather versus Pacquiao or whatever. They're not worried about the smaller fights. But the other people that can tell those people that are, are don't know this, hey, no, there are some good fights coming up here before the main fight. That would build the sport as far as I'm concerned. Don't be so cynical and think that all anybody really cares about is, is the main fight. So that's up to the promoters. You know, they have to do a better job of, of stacking the cards with young up-and-coming guys so people that like boxing like us can watch those guys, and, and we do, but the other people too, so that they can build a fan base. And that, that's extremely important. Uh, to do in boxing if you want to build the sport and you're going to be all greedy and just take the money you've got it right then fine but if you're looking two three years into the future and i think some promoters are is they still build fighters up uh that's the way to go because you can't think that these guys are going to be here forever you got to think about the future well one thing that i spoke with uh, someone about something completely different uh, a couple actually yesterday but the idea of you know how do we build a grassroots following of what we do and basically the consensus was we got to go out and grab people by the throat and bring them in so one thing that i want to do with this forum and i and have a couple other people in mind of let's go find the people that are talking about fights and fighters and talk to them you know and, and bring them into this forum talk to the fighters talk to the trainers that i talked to a gentleman from um, el paso that's been in the fight game since the early 80s he said, yeah i love to talk about boxing with you guys and just to see what's going on and go out to the four corners of the universe and say, look, who's, who's doing what, you know, let's go find these people and let's bring them in because, you know, you've got, remember the old days when you would have the undercard and the guy in the undercard was, you know, five and two, or, you know, he, he'd had a few fights, but he was still trying to figure his way into getting into the main event. Well, even the undercards now are title fights. That's not a bad thing, but we don't get to see, okay, let's throw this guy in the spotlight and see what he can do. Maybe he fades out, maybe it maybe gravitates toward it. So, you know, part of the forum that I think that we're trying to establish here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not wrong, so tough. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the idea of, I know, I know. It's, it's my show, I can say whatever. But the idea of, you know, I think that people will gravitate to what we're doing because we have fun doing it. Uh, I know that we spoke after the last one. I wish we would have been able to record that the whole way because it was a lot of fun. So if we can get people involved in what we're doing and get them to understand, and this goes through all sports as well, but I think we need to be able to find a, a common denominator with what do the fans want, and then if we can show the promoters that, then we can go from there. Maybe we become promoters ourselves. I don't know. I haven't figured that part out yet. But it, there's a way that – I mean, there are fights that are happening in, in Boston, fights that are happening in Chicago. Um, but it's like when wrestling took off, you know, the, the um, Big South wrestling would tour the country and you'd see Junkyard Dog and, you know, in Akron. And I was like, wow, the Junkyard Dog's here in Akron. How do we get this going again? That's, I guess that's my question. I don't know if there's an answer to that, but how do we get it back to we have boxing on? Well, I mean, I think you have to let the fighters fight. I mean, you look at that. What is we're talking about before? Uh, somebody was talking the other day about Gervonta Davis fighting somebody uh, of, of significance. You have to let those guys. Yeah, yeah, Mar, 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 That's a great fight. I want to see that fight. I want to see Devin Farmer. I want to see these guys are up and coming. I want to see these guys fight and perhaps put them on the undercard or as a co-feature. Okay, now we've we've uh, seen. What the Charlos can do, and it may not be as exciting as we thought they were, but let's see somebody fight one of the Charlos. 
Let's see Triple G fight one of the Charlos. Let's see uh, if they don't get together in May. Let's see Golovkin fight one of the Charlos. The, the boxing, the fights are out there. And granted, and I think maybe they might be waiting on these big pay-per-view uh, fights or they might be waiting on those paydays. They may not come, but people will watch. I hear a lot of people who have said in the past or said now boxing's dead. I don't agree with that. I do not. I love boxing. I'm not saying that because I guess I'm a homer, but I think there's enough great talent out there that if they were to put out some legitimate cards, people will come back. And not only would they come back, they would come back in droves for the, the, the true boxing fans and enthusiasts. But even the casual fan would go, oh, man. I got to turn my TV set on or whatever again, because if you keep providing, I'll get off this very quickly. If okay. you keep providing quality products, the people will come. They definitely will come. I, you know, I, I, I agree. I don't think I've ever seen anyone watch a good fight and go, oh, that's barbaric. Uh, you know, it's the sweet science. I don't think I've ever seen anyone say, well, I didn't like that. It's like, no, that was, I need to see more of that. And then they don't, see it you know and again i'm not, I'm not gonna get you know not gonna get my soapbox here and and and, and, and denigrate uh, the ufc or you and all that stuff i'm not gonna get to that but i think that this is more of a i don't know scientific way of of competing as opposed to and i know that you've got holds and grappling and all that stuff i get that but you know you got two guys with gloves in there you got to figure out how to get rid of the guy or you get got gotten rid of i guess is the best way of putting it. So. Um, what can we do as a group? Uh, what, what is this, um, Dazen, Dazen, whatever, is that the next way to go? Or is that just somebody trying to make a couple bucks? Oh, it, it, it's, Frank, it's money. But, you know, if you remember, what really makes boxing huge when it, years ago is the personalities or the fighters. Now, think about when Tyson was fighting. I mean, it wasn't, when he was started, it wasn't so much his personality. It was the fact that he would just go in there and knock guys out. And it was so explosive. And it got to the point where you, at least I said, God, I can't miss this guy fight. I got to watch him. And he was on ESPN like every three weeks right. back in the day. And then when Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, it was his personality and his predictions. And he was bigger than life. So it's, it's like both. You've got to have a big personality who can really fight. And then, the, and, and also the, the, the the mix-up is the media is not used to be, too. They don't promote boxing. You don't find boxing in newspapers anymore. Newspapers are pretty much going away. The what? whole world has changed. So to, to promote the sport, to get more people into it, is word of mouth, and I believe. And then the media. The media has to get uniform. People like us, you know, we have to talk it up more. We have to do more shows like this. We have to be almost like tests about it, you know, like, this I fight coming it. up on Saturday, you know, right. Talk, you know, talk about it. I mean, I've got, I've got three articles already on Pacquiao and Broner and Pacquiao is still so incredibly popular. Blows my mind. He gets 2000 hits in a matter of two hours. Right. I mean, there's so much passion about Pacquiao. So that to me, when you get somebody now, it's not Pacquiao, but if you can get somebody who gets really popular and then build off of that, that's about the way that you, you make, like back in the old days, Joe Lewis was so incredibly popular. Nobody would ever miss his fights. Rocky Marciano after, then Muhammad Ali cashed his fight. So it, it, it takes the fighter and the media and the people. But again, it's always going to be hard because the world is so different now. So you got to do like we're doing right now. You have to do these forums and talk and bring people on and just, and just do it. You know, you mentioned something that, and Charles, I, I think you agree with me, but I'm, you weigh in on this after I say it. You mentioned something with Ali. Now, we're all from that generation. And if we hadn't had Muhammad Ali, I don't think we would have known Ernie Shavers, Lyle, those guys. And then the guys that come after that, the, the Weavers and the, and the Greg Pages and those guys. I don't think that we would have th thought about them. And that's when the heavyweights were king. But when we had Ali... And those guys kind of fed off of that. So we get a, a, a Ernie Shavers or a, a, geez, a Jerry Quarry or, or a, a, like a Mike Weaver or somebody like that, that that didn't have the personality, but because that personality grew that division or that sport, then we learn more about those guys as well. 
and that's where we get a Larry Holmes and, and those kind of guys. So can we use Canelo? Can we use Lomo? Can we use those guys, a, a Bud Crawford? Can we use these guys to say, now, let's feed off of that, or is that a whole different thing? I mean, with social media and those kind of things, you would think we could. Errol Spence, is, I, I get a tweet from Errol Spence every eight seconds, it seems like. So is that – Am I looking at that right, or am I kind of just blowing in the wind there? I wouldn't say you're blowing in the wind, but I think the Ali situation was uh, a little unique. And the reason why I say that is because, as uh, John mentioned about the media, all eyes were always on Ali. That, that's who people love. And I think that's besides his talent, that's why he became uh, an icon, because we always knew about him. And unfortunately for some of the other great fighters, I feel like even though I watched a lot of boxing, what I could as a kid, and I listened to it on the radio, I feel like that, and I had to go back now, I feel like I missed a lot. I missed a lot of the great fights. I missed watching Jerry Corey be really being successful because the only time I saw Jerry Corey was either fighting uh, a Frazier or <laughs> fighting Ali, when he was really put work in against right. these other guys. Right. So, and, and that's why when I went back and looked at his record as an example, I was blown away because I was like, wow, he only lost like really legitimately nine fights. Right. But he fought quality guys. And I think, as you mentioned, you look at Ken Norton. Ken Norton, I mean, he broke Ali's jaw. Man, that, this guy, every night they brought it. So to switch over to your point about Canelo, I'm, I'm not sure if I – mean, I don't think it's him because he wants to be the guy. But I think we still need – for me, anyway, maybe I might be wrong – but I still need – with at least Ali, we had a few marquee fights, right? I still need a marquee fight from Canelo. I, I know Golovkin, I mean, that's great and all, but to me, they're always sitting in the back, back seat. They will never rise up to Pacquiao uh, Marquez like five times. I could not watch them five times. Yeah. I could watch Marquez and Pacquiao five times because I know what I'm going to get. Right. I want to get something. It might be something a little different, but they're going to give their best effort. So I'm not sure if uh, if if Canelo is that guy. Maybe it is Bud Crawford, but I think that he, for me, is the signature fights along with John. John mentioned the media has to buy in, but I think the media will buy in if you see the quality talents fighting one another. I think that's what's really going to bring boxing back along with the media buying in as well. Okay, John, is there is there something that they, they, we're missing? I mean, or that is missing? That, and as, as Charles said, you know, obviously Ali was a transcendent personality outside of the sport. Does does the person that we're whose coattails we're going to ride? Do they have to be, you know, the guy that shows up at the forum and watches the basketball game at the forum, the Staples Center, whatever that place is now they play, uh, and, and, and comes out and they, they watch, you know, oh, so-and-so's in the crowd today, you know, or, or they're at the, the Dodgers game or, or the Knicks game or whatever. Uh, no one knows the Knicks game, I forget. But is it that, oh, he's in the building now because that's what Mayweather was. Is that guy out there? I, yeah, as Charles said, I don't think it's, it's Canelo. Is that guy out there where we go, we've got to follow what he does? I think that, um, you know, Wilder was, is trying to do that, but I don't know if he's that kind of personality. Is, is that personality there right now, or is that the next guy we're waiting for? Well, yesterday, Dennis Taylor and myself on the Ringside Boxing Show, we interviewed Keith Thurman, and, and I really like Keith. I met Keith a number of years ago in Vegas, and, and he, was, he wasn't really that famous then. He was just – he was famous to people who knew boxing, but he was just – walking around at the MGM Garden Grand Arena, and I just walked up to him and started talking to him, and what an articulate guy he is and funny, and, and he hasn't changed. You know, we, we've had him on like three times. We'd love to have him on. He, he, he really answers your questions very thoughtfully, and I, the, the dislike of him blows my mind in some ways because this is a guy who said, look, I don't want to be on pay-per-view. I want everybody to see my fights. I don't want people – and I'm like, why are people booing this guy? I mean, okay, maybe he's a little confident, but – Hell, you better be, considering his profession, you better be confident. Right. You better believe you're going to beat everybody. So uh, he, he's, he's a really good talker and a really good spokesman for boxing. He doesn't, as he said yesterday, because ah, I used to trash talk when I was younger. He's, he's talking about being old now. He's 31, you know. <laughs> now I try, I try not to do that as much now. But I think a fight with Errol Spence, see, to me, Frank, 
and Charles, to me, you got to get everybody on the page because I don't know if you guys noticed this, but sometimes with the pretty big fights, like take uh, 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 Davis and, and Mares, other than the press conference, you haven't really heard anything about it, you know, right. and, and it seems to go that way leading up to the fight. And I'm like, where is, you know, I put stuff on Max Boxing and stuff, but it's it's just that little niche, you know, and if you want to get the sport more known, you got to talk like Charles would say, these are two really good fighters. This is probably going to be a really good fight. And does does anybody outside of maybe 100 people even know what's going to happen on February 9th in, in Los Angeles? And I blame, see, in my day, because I am older than you guys, in my day, they always there was a column every week in the newspapers, and he'd say, upcoming fights. You got to go searching for that now. Right. And most people aren't going to go searching for that stuff unless they love the sport like us. So somehow you have to get the media to say, look, we're buying into this whole thing. We're going to promote it. And they used to do commercials on the radio back when, when I was younger. I never hear any commercials on the radio right. anymore about boxing. So I think people like to say, ah, it's the sport. It's dead. It doesn't have. That's not it. I don't think that's it. I think some people in the media have said, look, we give up on boxing. We're, we're not going to promote it anymore. And they can have their little niche, but, but that's it. And, and to me, that's a big mistake. I mean, there's a reason that boxing has been around all these years, even with all the problems, even with all the controversies, it just keeps on ticking and then does things that blows our mind and then does things where we go, Oh, yeah. but whatever it is, it keeps going, right. Shoots itself in the foot and then recovers. And Errol Spence against Keith Thurman, it, I mean, I can't wait for that fight. If that happens next year, according mm -hmm. to Keith, that's probably when it's going to happen. That is that is not Hearns and Leonard, but that is a terrific Right, that's terrific a good point, exactly. Well, to touch on something that you said, when Thurman and Porter were doing press before their fight, I have never seen two people who were more in sync of what they were trying to do, more respectful for each other, and – going at it the same way of saying, yeah, I appreciate what he's doing. I appreciate this character and all that. I'm still going to take his freaking head off. I mean, that the press they did, you know, a couple of times on ESPN was like, that's fantastic. I mean, they did both articulate, both meaning what they were saying and both being respectful for the sport and for each other, but also saying, by the way, I'm going to kick your butt. I mean, that was impressive.